We have a whole playlist about one of our favorite spots to visit, Virginia Beach, Virginia. After all, Jack grew up in the area and still has relatives and friends nearby, so we visit pretty regularly. But even if we didn't have any connection to the area, we would still love visiting Virginia Beach with so much to experience. Of course, the main attraction is the beach, and we have documented the lovely Atlantic Ocean front with the city's boardwalk and the hotels, restaurants, and attractions up and down Atlantic Avenue. But there is a public beach a few miles south of that one that draws fewer visitors and where life moves at a much slower pace, and that is Sandbridge Beach. Sandbridge attracts two types of people. One is locals. There are less tourist attractions and no hotels around. So locals who want to avoid the bulk of tourists visit this beach. But it also attracts visitors who have rented one of the many beach houses that are located along Sandbridge Beach. Many of these houses have direct beach access. If you're on the other side of the street from the beach though, it's just a short walk to one of the access points. In addition to a lot of short-term rentals, many of these beach houses have full-time Virginia Beach residents living in them. There are also some condos in the area, some of which house locals and some of which serve as vacation rentals. The whole area has a more laid-back vibe than the oceanfront boardwalk area a bit to the north. Many people have referred to the Sandbridge area as the Outer Banks of Virginia because of its similarities to the popular barrier island destination to the south in North Carolina. Indeed, Sandbridge is at the north end of a peninsula that starts the Outer Banks. Just south of Sandbridge is Back Bay Wildlife Refuge and False Cape State Park, which we talked about in our last video. We'll put a link to that at the end of this video. Then just south of those parks is the North Carolina State Line and the Outer Banks, starting with Corova and Corolla, where the wild horses of the Outer Banks live. We've got a video about that too. When you go to Sandbridge, there are some businesses, but not many. We saw one beach supply shop called Sandpiper Beach Shop. They have souvenirs as well as things you may need at the beach, bathing suits, towels, sunscreen, beach toys, and body boards. There's one market in the area called Sandbridge Seaside Market. So if you're staying in one of the Sandbridge beach rentals, you should be able to find most groceries that you need to stock up on here. It is a small store, so if you can't find what you're looking for, don't worry, you are only a few miles away from the larger grocery stores inland. They also had some souvenirs in there as well. Next door is the Sandbridge Island Restaurant, serving seafood and pizza. This isn't the only restaurant in the area, but there are not very many. We'll show you another one later in this video. Next door to the market and restaurant is the main Sandbridge public parking lot, but the parking lot was full so we couldn't park there. We drove about 3.8 miles south along the main drag in Sandbridge, which is Sandpiper Road, and ended up at Little Island Park, a city-run park with public access to the southern end of Sandbridge Beach. Parking is $5 per vehicle in May through September, but if you visit in October through April, parking is free. This park has a couple of bathhouses with changing rooms and bathroom facilities and an outdoor shower to rinse off sand. They also have fun playground equipment for the kids if they get tired of the beach. They have four large picnic shelters with charcoal grills, which can be reserved for a fee. This building is the park office. It is historically significant as the building was the Little Island Lifesaving Station from 1867 until 1964. Now you can check out athletic equipment with a photo ID here, such as frisbees, cornhole boards, basketballs, volleyballs, and badminton equipment. For those looking for such recreational options, they also have lighted tennis courts and a basketball court at the park. But of course, the main draw is the beach. 
Little Island is the site of the only fishing pier at Sandbridge Beach. Daily admission to this 400-foot pier is $8 for residents and $10 for non-residents. If you just want to sightsee on the pier and not go fishing, you can do so for $1 for Virginia Beach residents or $2 for non-residents. There's also almost 800 feet of beach at this park, which, like the rest of Sandbridge, is usually less crowded than the touristy beach area by the boardwalk. This is how it looked on a Saturday in July. There were people here, but it wasn't as crowded as the popular beach area a few miles north. Since Sandbridge is on a peninsula, you can spend part of your day enjoying the waves in the ocean and then spend the rest of it kayaking in the bay on the other side of the land. After spending several hours at the beach, we stopped at a local Sandbridge restaurant about six miles inland from the beach called Margie and Ray's Seafood Restaurant. This place was opened in 1964 by a couple named, you guessed it, Margie and Ray, as a convenience store. They passed the store on to their son Thomas, who turned it into a seafood restaurant and still operates it to this day. This place prides itself on serving fresh steamed seafood. There's plenty of outdoor seating and a full bar inside. Here are the menus. You can pause the video if you want to read the details. Alice ordered the fried shrimp with fries and broccoli as her sides. It also came with hush puppies for $11.99. I ordered fish and chips and ordered broccoli as my additional side, all for $16.99. The seafood was solid and we both enjoyed our meals. But our favorite thing about this meal was the slice of chocolate peanut butter pie that we split for dessert for $6. It was so good. They had several other types of pie for dessert as well. The next time we're in Virginia Beach, we have to return here for some good seafood and more of that pie. This restaurant gets 4.5 out of 5 stars on TripAdvisor. So, if you find yourself on a Virginia Beach vacation and want to find a less crowded spot in the sand, check out Sandbridge. And check out the links at the end of this video to see more about Sandbridge Area Attractions, Back Bay Wildlife Refuge, and False Cape State Park. The other link is to our most watched video ever, by far. This is our 10 favorite things to do in Virginia Beach. Please check out that one if you haven't already. All the cool kids are doing it. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can see you the next time we're traveling through.